Environmental specimen banks are one of many tools uh, and a very cost-effective tool for really assessing whether politi political regulation transfers in improvement of the environment. We archive uh, five different samples, mussels, fishes, benthic sediments, armosuke particulates, and human breast milk. That the samples that we now store will be used in the future for solving problems that we have not anticipated today. People can go back to our samples from today and look at the concentrations of various chemicals which we would not be able to measure now or which we would not think of measuring now because we don't know that this chemical might be a problem. We um, monitor contaminants in whole fish tissues which we preserve in our archive and uh, recently there was interest in brominated flame retardants by the Canadian government and we were able to generate a 30-year time trend using our archive specimens. The U.S. has been uh, uh, environmental specimen banking since 1979. For our specimen bank, we started collecting these specimens 40 years before. We have experiences with our environment specimen bank since 1980s, so this covers three decades. Officially, the Ministry of the Environment announced the Norwegian ESB to be established now in October 2010. One of the things I've learned about specimen banks is you can't anticipate what you will be measuring in the future. Uh, ten years ago, I would have had no idea I would have been measuring brominated flame retardants in beluga whales. Our uh, favorite uh, matrix is uh, guillemot eggs, um, and we do retrospective analysis on these eggs for many different contaminants, but um, Recently we have analyzed uh, perfluorinated substances and they show a, a clear increase. So they have um, uh, quite uh, extremely elevated levels. And uh, we have determined the increase in the perfluorinated compounds in coastline environment in Japan. Here is a specimen of uh, Adamusium kolbeki, which is uh, a mussel living in the Antarctic coastal waters. In particular, uh, we are uh, monitoring heavy metals such as mercury and uh, cadmium, which are very toxic to uh, animals and uh, humans. And so far, fortunately, uh, the concentration of these pollutants and their temporal trends uh, indicate a natural, uncontaminated situation. But we've got some interesting data, for example, that some of the fish we've analyzed have got mercury values above the environmental quality standards. This one is here from a polar bear that was shot by Inuits last year. We have taken a sample of the hair and analyzed it for mercury. This sample is also polar bear hair, but this is an archaeological sample that was found by archaeologists. It has been shown to be 700 years old. The new sample have 10 ppm mercury, the old sample has 0.5. So the new sample have 20 times more mercury than the sample that is 700 years old. We saw the rise and fall of uh, PCB contamination along the uh, French coastline and also the rise and fall of uh, metal contaminations. One consumer product is a brominated flame retardant uh, in these uh, whales and we found that the concentrations are increasing in the blubber of the beluga whale. And this is significant because beluga whales are consumed by people for subsistence and it also may have some effect on beluga whale health. Since the mid to late two, 1990s to early 2000s, the um, con concentrations of those compounds have been declining by about 5% a year in the Canadian environment. We've been monitoring these chemical compounds in Arctic seabird eggs, and as you can see from this graph, the concentrations of these PBDEs have increased from 1975 to 2003, after which they dropped off very dramatically. We found that in the, in the Asian developing countries, the levels of the classical organochlorine chemicals such as DDTs, PCBs are decreasing and at the same time the novel POPs chemicals like the uh, brominator flame retardants are increasing.
Well, although there are specimen banks in many different countries, there's still a need to expand banking because there are many regions in which uh, environmental specimen banking does not include. We also hope that the samples that are collected far away from industrial areas as Greenland and the Arctic is uh, situated far away from industrial areas, that these samples can be used to compare with samples collected here in Germany, for instance. We also would very much like to see integrated specimen banks for biomonitoring and environmental samples. I think that's very important to include human biomonitoring in this work. We also need to uh, get samples out of the bank and get scientists to use those samples. I think by collaborating more widely um, on a global basis, um, we can do better science, which means we can help protect the environment in a better way. The pilot specimen banks should also be established in the biodiversity rich developing countries. There are nearly 20 environmental space banks all over the world. Let's cooperate. My hope is that we uh, will achieve to establish a more integrated cooperation in environmental specimen banking. I'm uh, convinced that with this cooperation we can provide a powerful tool to politics.